Hi, I'm Daniel Foley from the Abundant Life Training Center, and welcome to our daily communion meditation, where today we're talking about phantom symptoms. Phantom symptoms. Symptoms of something that seems like it's there, but it's really not there. You know, when people have limbs amputated, they have what's called phantom pain, which means they ha- they're experiencing pain in that limb that's no longer there. And years ago, I had a wisdom tooth removed. And prior to getting the tooth removed, the, they was having some issues around the tooth, having some pain and issues around the tooth. And the tooth is removed. I started having those same symptoms coming up around that area. I'm trying to do everything that I know to do. I began to seek after God. So what, what do I got to do to get rid of this, whatever is going on here? I felt like he showed me something to do, which was tell the phantom symptoms to leave. Just speak to it. Tell the phantom symptoms to leave. So I just said, phantom symptoms, leave in Jesus' name. Next thing you know, it's feeling completely fine. Now, does that work that way for everything? No. But I found in some cases, and I had another example of this the other day, where... In our backyard, we've got these huge pine trees, and they put out just tremendous amounts of pollen. It's crazy to look at the amount of pollen. You can see the pollen just sitting on everything in our backyard. We came home the other day, and our our driveway, the blacktop, was literally just yellow across the whole driveway. And I used to have some pretty bad seasonal allergies, but they've gotten a lot better over the years. But every now and then, I'll start to get some symptoms come back up. And I started to have some allergy symptoms just sneezing, snot coming out of everywhere, you know, these types of things. And we were trying to play outside with our family, trying to enjoy a nice day. But it's kind of miserable to be out there when you got all this going on. I felt like God bring this up again. Tell the phantom symptoms to leave. So I just said it again. Very simple thing. Phantom symptoms. Leave. In Jesus' name. Immediately, the symptoms got better. And what I felt like God was beginning to show me is that some things from our, from our past, God has made us to be new. He's broken some things off us. He's made us to be new creations. Some things, symptoms that are showing up in our lives can simply leave just through saying this very simple thing. Phantom symptoms leave in Jesus' name. Does this work for everything? Probably not everything. But some things, and I'll say, give it a go. Give it a try. By faith, speak it. Be amazed at what it does for some things. So we're going to take communion over this today, just asking for God's help. To give us wisdom and understanding of this and help us to walk in this principle. Of how to walk in this and which things it applies to. I think what he's showing me is it applies to more than I was just thinking of initially. Because I had just used it on a very few little simple things, but it's worked pretty consistently. Why are we taking communion every day? About 10 years ago, I had pretty much no spiritual life whatsoever. I was just doing life on my own without God. Doing things my own way. But life wasn't going the way I wanted it to go. My life was very up and down. I was stressed out all the time, very unbalanced. At the time, I'm running my personal training gym business, and the business started out good, but we got into this time where we're hiring, we get into staff turnover. I got some months where I'm losing thousands of dollars every month. I remember going for a walk with my wife around the neighborhood, just telling her over and over, there's got to be a better way to live. There's got to be more to life than this. And it wasn't for a lack of seeking and searching. I had been traveling all over the country, studying with the best health and fitness experts, studying the most successful gyms. I've been studying in other areas like relationships and leadership and business and finance. I've been reading at least a book a week, every week for something like 10 years, spending thousands and thousands of dollars on courses and seminars and mentorships and apprenticeships and all kinds of things. But I wasn't finding what I was looking for. Then one day I came across this challenge to start reading one chapter from the book of Proverbs. Proverbs has 31 chapters. 
So on day one of the month, you read Proverbs chapter one. Day two of the month, you read Proverbs chapter two. Then you keep going like that until the end of the month and you start back over again. So I got started with the challenge. Immediately I saw my way of doing things and God's way of doing things. We're definitely not in alignment with each other. After doing this for a while, one morning, Proverbs 13, 22, just seemed to jump off the page at me. It says, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. And that verse got me thinking, what's the most valuable thing that we could pass on to future generations? After some time of thinking about it, I came to the conclusion that the most valuable thing we could pass on would be wisdom or teaching or training for how to truly live. And so I made a commitment that day. I want to create manuals, lessons, systems, teaching, training for all the different areas of life. Areas like purpose and health and family, finances, order, time, and community. But really, when I got started, I had no clue where to start. So I began to seek after God, I began to press into him. My relationship with him just began to grow exponentially. He began to show up. He began to, began to teach me and to train me. And I just simply began to document what he was taking me through. Over the course of about 10 years, it turned into this whole program with books and courses and partners. It wasn't always easy all the time. I had to unlearn a lot of my old ways to break free of some patterns. Got put in some impossible looking situations. Only to see God just come through over and over and over again. And turn into this whole program we have called the Abundant Life Blueprint. And in the Abundant Life Blueprint, I believe the most important thing is daily communion. Daily communion is what I call the number one table turner for all of life. Has the ability to just turn things around, to turn the tables, to change the trajectory of our lives going forward. Jesus says, as often as you do this, remember me. It's this opportunity to stir his sacrifice into our mind and remembrance. Helps us to abide in him so that our lives produce much fruit. The Apostle Paul says, every time we take communion, we're proclaiming the death of Jesus. But in the case of a will or an inheritance, nothing happens until you prove the death. So in a way, communion is like an activation of all these benefits that are found in the new covenant. And personally speaking, I found us this opportunity. We can take these promises that God has made. We can activate them in our lives to experience his help walking in them from the moment we take communion on. But it's also important we take it the right way. Every time we take communion, to take it with the fear of the Lord, with deep awe and reverence and respect, for the sacrifice of Jesus. And I think it's important we remember both sides of the cross. On one side of the cross, we remember God loved his, loved us so much, he sent his one and only son. Jesus is willing to come and humble himself even unto death on a cross. He goes through everything that he goes through in the lead up to the cross and on the cross. But then he's raised back to life. He connects us back to God, makes us right and holy and perfect in God's sight. We can have this covenant relationship with God. And I think it's important we remember both sides of that. So the process we typically use, we start with about a two-minute long prayer that's mostly scripture. Coming from Ephesians chapter 1 and the prayer of Jabez found in 1 Chronicles chapter 4. And then we take a few minutes to examine ourselves. Because the Apostle Paul says some people are weak and sick. And they die early because they don't examine or judge themselves before taking communion. And if communion has the power to do that in the negative, I believe it has the power to do the opposite of that in the positive if we'll take it the right way. To make us healthy and strong and give us long life. And then after our time of communion, we've been talking about some practical Physical workout tips and advice. Because I truly believe physical exercise is meant to teach us how to exercise our faith. To receive this grace by faith and to experience God doing the work. And then once we understand how to do that, we can take those same principles and apply them into the other areas of our life. So let's get started with our prayer. 
And then we'll get into our time of communion after that. Heavenly Father, I pray for all those who are watching or listening, their families, all those connected to them, and all of our church and governmental leaders. I thank you for releasing us from darkness and transferring us into the light, into the kingdom of your dear son. I thank you for your purpose and grace given to us in Christ Jesus before time ever began. And I thank you that Jesus was smitten for us so that you could fight for us. And I keep asking that you, the Father of glory, would give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we would know you better. That the eyes of our hearts would be enlightened to know the hope to which you've called us and the riches of your glorious inheritance that is in us, and the immeasurable greatness of your power to us who believe, the same power that you exercised in Christ when you raised him from the dead and seated him at your right hand in heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And you put all things under his feet and made him to be the head of the body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Father, I ask you to bless us, to make your face shine upon us and let us find grace and favor in your eyes, to expand our borders and our territory, to expand our capacity to receive your purpose and grace, your love and your goodness, and to let it flow through us so that we do good and are a blessing to people all over the world. Ask you to send us opportunities to do good and be a blessing today. And help us be sensitive to those opportunities. Ask you to keep your hand on us and help us do today what's right and best in your eyes and to do it with peace and joy and confidence in you. We ask you to stretch out your hand to heal and do signs and wonders and keep us from evil and pain. Through the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All right, so we're going to go to the other half of prayer. This is our time to examine ourselves. Are we making today a masterpiece? How are we going to do that? We're going to get connected to the master. We have to have this eternal perspective with God, but our relationship with him has got to be brought down into today. To impact the things that we do, the decisions that we make today. That's where we talk about executing these four fundamentals and bringing some presence and some energy and some fun into them today. But before we get into that, let's remember God has a process. When the Israelites went from Egypt to the promised land, there was a process that they had to go through. And it's simply learning to just have that childlike faith and belief in God, learning to rest and to trust in him and allowing God to do the work, allow him to be the source of things rather than our own self-effort. So our first fundamental, let's get positioned in the light today. Every day, we've got to keep repositioning ourselves back into the light. We're going to position ourselves in humility, in forgiveness. We're going to walk in the light today. We're going to walk in love today. We're going to take our position in gratitude and praise today. One of the greatest expressions of faith. And being in position is a big deal. Because it puts us in position to be able to receive everything that God has for us. And in the light, God has taken everything that he has and he gave it all to Jesus. His spirit and power and presence, his love and peace and joy, his mind and wisdom, health and energy, time and finances, his purpose and kingdom, it's all available today. To be received, we have to learn how to get it flowing through us. So first we've got to get in position to receive and then we've got to get it flowing through us. That's where we talk about magnifying the light. To magnify is to make bigger or greater. It's going to expand the capacity where God can flow more of all these good things through us. To magnify the light, I think of it as meditation. Just constantly repeating, just rolling over in our mind, over and over again. God's word, his faithfulness, his unfailing love, his mighty works. Just taking the things of God, just rolling them over and over and over and again in our minds. Now, this is not denying that there's issues or problems. It's simply choosing to magnify the light. We're going to take those problems. We're going to give them to God. We're going to magnify him as bigger than those problems. Because he can solve them a whole lot better than we can. But he does give us a choice. We could choose not to do any of this. 
We could stay stuck in pride and rebellion, bitterness, unforgiveness, venting, complaining, toiling away in our mind, trying to figure it all out rather than resting and trusting in him. And that's where we're going to learn to recognize the symptoms. Because when we're out of position or we're magnifying the wrong thing, there's going to be some symptoms in our life. Might there be the tendency to retaliate at people or snap at people? We might avoid people, give them the silent treatment. On the inside, you feel this heaviness and weight and pressure on you. Might have feelings of hopelessness, like you're trapped or you're stuck. Low energy is another big symptom. Then emotionally, there's the fear and stress and worry. We're dreading things in the future. And you get stuck in these vicious cycles. But when we take our position in the light, there's this rest in our soul. There's this fullness and completeness in him. And when we rest, God goes to work. And everything is free and easy and effortless. And you got his peace and his joy and his love, his spirit and power all beginning to flow through us. And if all this weren't enough, God gives us this amazing gift of grace. That if we ever get off track, it just takes a moment to turn it right back around again. How do we do it? I think it starts with humility. Father, I'm off track. I've missed it. Forgive me. We receive that forgiveness. We forgive ourselves. If we need to forgive anybody else, we take those steps. If we need to say we're sorry, we take those steps. And then I like to pray this very simple prayer. Father, thank you that what you put within me is more than enough to handle whatever's coming my way today in a beautiful, graceful way. Help me to tap into it and to cultivate it and see it flowing in my life at a greater level today. And then our third fundamental, we're going to stay tuned in the day. My favorite way to do this is with the journal before bed. And lately we've talked about installing some filters at the top of our journal. These are just short phrases, maybe a statement, maybe one word that we keep rewriting every night as a way to reinforce God's standards for our life. Serves as a directional tool to help us keep us on the path. Might look something like this. God is working continually for my good. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do continually good for others. And I like to start my journal with gratitude and praise. And then to magnify. What's God been doing today? What's he, what are all the ways I saw him showing up today? Then I like to ask this question. God, what are you trying to show me today? And just get still and listen. Whatever comes into my mind, just begin to write those things down. And then we've got to stay tuned in throughout the day because he's trying to lead us and navigate us throughout the day. If you ever feel like you're losing that connection, just take one to two minutes. Just slow down, get connected back to him again. And then the final thing I've learned to do in my journal is to plan out the upcoming day with God. And I've learned to stick with, what do I know to do today? Because I learned sometimes I was getting out ahead of God. I've taken action on things that I don't know to do yet. I'm trying to force things to happen and getting ahead of schedule. On the other side, sometimes I was procrastinating on things that I knew to do. So I've learned to stick with, what do I know to do today? That becomes the plan. Then we wake up like a kid on Christmas morning, and we remember this very important principle, that the first thing out of our mouth every morning sets the tone for the whole day. As I learned about this, God began to show me, What's the first thing he says in the Bible? Let there be light. So I've begun to start my days this way. The very first words out of my mouth, let there be light. It's amazing how just such a simple little thing sets the tone for the whole day. And then we start walking out that plan together with God, full confidence in him. He's right there with us every step of the way. And we get to that place of confident faith. His grace begins to surge through us. He begins to go to work. He begins to beautify our lives. And beauty is attractive and magnetic and just begins to pull more and more of all that God has for us into our lives. So let's talk about phantom symptoms. Like I said, people that have phantom pain, they have pain in an area that didn't used to be there. The old us is buried with Christ in baptism. We're raised to new life. But I feel like there's some phantom symptoms of things that used to be there that can come back in. They seem real. But I believe if you'll practice this, you'll tell the phantom symptoms to leave. 
I think your eyes will be open. You'll be amazed how quickly this works, how well it works. So Heavenly Father, we're asking you to teach us about this today. What are these phantom symptoms? What's causing them? What's, what's it all about? How do we walk in this consistently? We thank you that on the night Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's just take a moment to remember how much God loved us. He was willing to send Jesus. Jesus is willing to humble himself on a cross, even unto death on a cross. He's rejected and betrayed, spit on, hit, mocked, ridiculed, whipped, nailed to a cross. Worst of all, I believe he's separated from God and the cup of God's wrath is poured onto his body. He was destroyed by God. But then he's raised back to life. He's victorious over death. And that same victorious power now lives on the inside of us. Connects us back to God, makes us right and holy and perfect in his sight. Through his one sacrifice. And now he's fighting for us. So, Father, we thank you for this bread. And ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. If you have a bread, you can take your bread. Then after supper, Jesus took the cup. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant. In my blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins for many. It's that forgiveness of sins that releases us from darkness. He transfers us into the light. You can have this personal relationship with God, this covenant relationship with him. A blood sworn oath. He's with us. He's for us. He's only going to do continually good for us all the time. We've got him on our side. So, Father, we thank you for this cup. And ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. If you have a juice, you can take a juice. <clears throat> all right. Let's talk about some health and fitness stuff. Just a reminder. If you're just getting going in your health and fitness, start small. Start small. Take a humble approach. It's the humble who are given grace. Start small. Start with the seed and focus on growing it over time. Stay consistent and grow it over time. Take a more humble approach. You're going to get better results over the longer term. But I hope this has been helpful for you today. If you'd like to learn more about partnering with us in the Abundant Life Blueprint, you can go to the Abundant Life Training Center.com.